With temperatures in the mid 70s today and much of the same for the rest of the week, it's kind of hard to believe November is actually mm -hmm. here. But before you know it, those temperatures are going to take a steep drop and the downright cold will be nipping at your nose. And that means homeowners will soon crank up the heat. In fact, studies show most homeowners will spend more than $2,000 keeping their homes warm this winter. But energy experts say there are plenty of ways to cut down on heating costs. In today's Angie Swift report, how to stay warm and watch the savings add up as the temperatures go down. So somewhere in that ductwork is an air leak. Dan Welkin is a comfort consultant. He pokes around attics and crawl spaces, assessing home performance, the combination of HVAC efficiency, and how well a house maintains its temperature. There's no reason to upgrade to a high efficiency furnace if there's something wrong with your ductwork in the attic. Welkin says sealing air leaks is the easiest and least expensive way to improve your home's energy efficiency. He suggests doing your own depressurization test to help find leaks. Turn on your clothes dryer, your bath exhaust vents, and your kitchen exhaust vent, and then go around everywhere in the home and field for cold air leaks. Best time to do this is on a very cold day. Once you seal any leaks, shift your focus to the heating system. The biggest user of energy in your home is your HVAC system, so proper maintenance is going to save you money. Change your furnace filter each month and be sure to get a furnace tune-up this fall. Something else to take into consideration, is your house properly insulated? More than half of the U.S. homes do not have the proper insulation. The amount of insulation you'll need is determined by the climate. If you're not sure how much you should have, check with a professional. Adding the right amount of insulation in your home can save you money. Welkin says you need 10 to 12 inches in your attic. Any more than that may not be cost effective. Ideally, all these ducts here would be covered with insulation. Many homes these days have programmable thermostats, but surprisingly enough, 40% of households either don't know how to use them or just don't use them at all, which means you could be missing out on a lot of savings. If you are using your smart thermostat or simply dialing back your heat when you're not home, Welkin says the amount you save all depends on the amount of time your temperature is down. If it's only set back for three or four hours and then comes back to temperature, it probably wasn't worth it. But if you're gone all day and don't come home until late in the evening and so your temperature is set back eight, nine, ten hours, then you can realize some savings. And if you use a space heater, be careful. Improper use makes them the second leading cause of home fires and running them constantly will hit you hard in the wallet. A $15 space heater running 24-7 could add over $100 a month to your bill. Another cost-free energy saver is to keep your major appliances in good shape because they're the number two energy user in your home. That means break out your vacuum attachment and clean those refrigerator coils. Check the seals around oven, deep freezer, and refrigerator doors. Large appliances use up a lot of energy, so you want to keep them sealed up as tight as your house. In the laundry room, the washing machine can be a real energy hog, but washing your clothes in cold water can cut a chunk out of your bill and keeping the dryer lint screen and vents clear will keep it running efficiently. Want to save but don't want to sacrifice? Try turning the base temperature on your water heater down to 120 degrees. You won't notice a drop in the shower, but you will on your bill. Now, if you feel like you've done as much as you can and your energy bill is still too high, reach out to your utility company to see if they offer a free energy audit or hire one yourself. You may find savings that you missed. And I am always willing to take a little extra money in my pocket, mm -hmm. especially, you can probably guess why, the holidays yes. are coming up. And that means you and I are probably going to be buying some of our things online this year. Did you know that 72% of millennials, two thirds of Americans 50 and older shop online? But there are some things that you should purchase the old fashioned way. Here are seven products that you should always buy in a store and never online. Online shopping is the way of the future, so use the web for research. Don't purchase a pair of wheels over the internet. Find bike brands you like, then take a test ride in town. Bicycle warranties purchased from a website often won't let you make repairs locally. On average, children's feet grow half a size every two months. You're likely to return your child's shoes if you only saw them on a screen. Flowers and furniture can be clicked quickly, but don't trust the picture-perfect stock photos you see online. 
Colors, sizes, and furniture fabrics may differ from what shows up at your doorstep. And finally, don't forget to read the fine print. Macy's charges a fee of $7 to return a rug. Go in store to shop for household goods like curtains, bedding, and rugs. Something else that's common sense, you think about it. Remember that online prices aren't negotiable. Now, if an item in a store has a defect, chances are you could probably get a little bit knocked off the price. Hmm. Never thought about that. There you go. Very interesting. So once you buy your goods, perhaps the next thing you want to do is spruce up your home. A deep cleaning would probably make a world of difference, but we're not talking about pulling out the vacuum. Up next, hear how a professional cleaning process can not only make your home nice and clean, but it may also help you breathe better. A little later on, if you are a Star Wars fan, you do not want to miss this. We're going to introduce you to a local artist who turned his hobby into a career and is now playing a big role in the highly anticipated release of the new Star Wars movie. The Marvel Life will be right back. <laughs> 